So in his speech Tuesday, President Obama hit the GOP budget plan. I'm betting he thinks this congressional Republican budget is something different altogether, perhaps a Trojan horse. This congressional Republican budget is something different altogether. It is a Trojan horse. Disguised as deficit reduction plans, it is really an attempt to impose a radical vision on our country. It is thinly veiled social Dar Darwinism. And there you have the official cocktail party phrase for libs. Even Robert Reich, the economist slash Ewok, wrote that voters must choose between social Darwinism and a decent society. Wonder what he's for. Which confuses me. Railing against Darwin? I thought the left was pro-science. <laughs> Is Obama against evolution? Maybe he's a flat earther too. Mm -hmm. They must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They'd be charter members of the Flat Earth Society. They'd be charter members of the Flat Earth Society. He's so cute when he's repetitive. And so <laughs> behold the teacher's lounge lizard, immune to competition. Achievements are measured by how much free stuff you get from taxpayers and how many jokes you can make about Walmart. But Obama criticizing small government is part of a bigger trend. Consider all the great Americana that's been under fire from the left lately. They hate our diet. We're so fat. They hate our cars. They're way too big. They mock our borders. Who needs them? They think our Constitution is quaint. South Africa's, for example, is way better. Our Supreme Court's too meddlesome. And our economic system, it's just too mean. Seriously, if you could harness energy from this distaste for Western values, who needs windmills? Mm -hmm. But that's what happens when minds are shaped by Starbucks socialism or socialists who think evolution is neat until it applies to them, which is why they stay on campus where survival of the fittest doesn't apply. Yes, you know, uh, earlier in the green room, Juan was telling me that he thought this was the best monologue I've ever written. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because I'm afraid of Darwinism. Yes, you are. Oh, let, me, let me ask okay. you a question. How is this budget plan, social Darwinism, if it's trying to rein in spending that you can see is destroying countries like Greece? Isn't, aren't we taking the tough medicine now when we should? Well, not if it, as the president says destroys the things that we need to grow. You got to grow the economy. So you can't take away investments in social structure like education, job training, development businesses, developing new businesses that will prosper in the global economy. If you stop doing those things, it's an invitation to failure. Yeah, but some of those things weren't working. A lot of those things weren't well, working. Well, if anybody has ideas for how to grow the economy, it is the current president. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not. Um, I, they didn't even read Paul Ryan's budget before they went out. And in fact, it was just a year ago this month that the almost the exact same speech that President Obama gave on Tuesday, he gave a year ago as soon as Paul Ryan's budget came out. At least this time he didn't invite him to be in the front row and insult him <laughs> in front of the world while he was there. Here's a problem that they have with the Ryan budget. He, Paul Ryan is not a good villain. Yeah. He never takes a bad picture. <laughs> he's like the guy who you want to have as your neighbor. He's your favorite son-in-law. And he's got some good ideas. And he is not at all cowed by the president who distorts his record. He says, oh, I'll take that and I'll answer it this way. Yes. And if you actually look at it, no one's talking about destroying education or Medicare. In fact, I was. what his <laughs> budget does is preserve these programs going forward before we hit a fiscal cliff. The, ama off it, the amazing thing about Paul Ryan is his hairline, which now is so low it qualifies as a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and you can get a tax credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, yes. I think this is a really weird message. Don't mm -hmm. you? I mean, if voters run to the polls because Democrats convince them that there's a Trojan horse filled with social Darwinists, <laughs> they're in really big trouble. And I think that they're doing this because their social agenda is falling apart. I mean, you went through a lot of the platforms that, Greg, voters are saying these yeah. are really weird. Why are they meddling in these things? And when you look at what Paul Ryan's trying to do, someone who's very smart, very respected, he's trying to pass a budget. Something that the Democrats haven't done for over a thousand days. Yes. And something that the Senate that's democratically controlled, I would point out, has rejected when President Obama has handed them his budget. So kudos to Paul Ryan for having courage on this one. The president won't even address the real issues of what he's trying to do. He's just being demagogued for it. Well, I hate which to. Which is ridiculous. I, I, you, know, you know my role here in the family <laughs> oh, what is God. to be the skunk. I'm you, the skunk at the You called us Republican party. Romper Room the other day. You're such it's, a cute it, well, skunk. I love, I love coming to the Romper Room. Jeez, who wouldn't? <laughs> but wait, what that I was guess, a club downtown. <laughs> was it? Oh, uh, you lead a very Closed interesting life. Closed in the recession. Life. Was that? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but I must say that in all that we've said so far about my pal Paul Ryan, we somehow have neglected that Paul Ryan has lowered tax rates 
on corporations and the rich. He's got about, I think it goes down to about 25% on the top, 10%. Rich would pay higher under his plan. No, it would Yes, they would, they would want. And yes. secondly, that he has somehow forgotten that in all this talk about, oh yeah, let's lower tax rates to spur economic growth. Oh, well, exactly how would this be revenue neutral? How would you pay for these tax cuts to the rich? Oh, he doesn't say. He doesn't say what tax deductions he would eliminate, what loopholes he would eliminate, what tax shelters would be done away with. How is that a responsible budget document? But, okay, let me ask you, Kimberly. Could you argue that President Obama is actually exercising social Darwinism by putting off these harsh cuts? So we might end up in a situation, much like Greece, you know, or a road warrior <laughs> uh, uh, apocalyptic right. view, where we are, you know, it's survival of the fittest on motorbikes. <laughs> well, he's you know? encouraging. I mean, he's pushing us down along the path for sure. And then these comments that he makes, they don't help anybody. It just stirs up again more class warfare. And he's acting, quite frankly, like a crybaby. OK, because he's not coming forward with any good ideas. Harry Reid's not helping at all. They're refusing to come up with any kind of budget uh, solution or plan of their own. And then they take apart Paul Ryan, which you do an independent analysis of. It has a lot of really positive factors in it. Unless he gets his way, he's not going to let anybody else play in the playground. He wants to cut our military and national defense spending. He wants to increase entitlements to the point where everybody's just two hands out and two more hands coming out from behind the back and increase taxes, you know, just Keep spending. We'll find a way to pay for it. And it's just, it's not working. I see tax cuts for the super rich. That's not hands out from the rich. That's Listen. not what the budget does. That's not oh, what his budget does. Oh, oh, oh. That's not what it, it does. It sure looks like that. They would ask the rich to <laughs> one. The rich would pay more how under the these tax rates. More? On lower tax they would. rates, how is that possible? No, look at, read, have look you looked look through his budget? I've they actually the would pay more. Than they do now. It's on the it's, not it's a lot on the more, web it's on their website. Unlike that health care bill, right. <laughs> where you no one even read it. You can actually go and read this. Uh, I want to just uh, throw to a, a clip. Uh, the White House press secretary Jay Carney mixed it up with Brett Baer on mm. special report last night. We have the tape. All Democrats could vote on a budget. They could vote on it tomorrow, <laughs> and they could pass it if they put it on the table. You the know that. So why doesn't the president call the president Harry Reid and say, it, "Do that"? Brett, I know that that's what you want to make this web no, no, about. No, no, that's what I'm You asking. know that the only way in modern-day Washington to achieve a significant budget compromise is when both parties are willing to work together. Dana, I don't fault Jay Carney. He's only 16. <laughs> but, uh, he looks great, though. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. Benjamin Button. Uh, what do you does, think? It's not an enviable position. No. To, uh, and I know a little something about that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you feel like you're having defend, to defend the indefensible, um, one of the things they complain about is that the Republicans put forward President Obama's budget for a vote and it lost unanimously. But the thing is, they, so they call it a gimmick. Mm -hmm. But they, Democrats have run the Senate for six years. And yeah. they haven't done, they, ha, they could do a gimmick too. Like, just go ahead and pass the president's budget. If you believe in it, let's yeah. just like see it. Let's have the, that's a gimmick for gimmick. All right, I want to talk about the, uh, you know, the health and uh, health care. Justice Department has 24 hours, apparently, to respond to the uh, appeals court order to explain if Obama understands right. what judicial activism really means. Andrew, are, are they going to respond to this at all? Well, they, they have to. They've they got 24 hours. I think that the court is smacking down the White House, and I think that they're letting them know that you can't, you can't do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that they're also letting them know that, listen, we're a powerful independent branch and we're not to be messed with. Because think about what this is doing. This is how, folks, constitutional crises happen. When one branch undermines the other branch. And I think that the court is saying, uh-uh, you're not going to mess with us this time. But really, 200 years of precedent? Mm -hmm. They're asking them to write a brief on Marbury versus Madison. 200 years of pre precedence. This is very dangerous maybe territory they could go back to and their, bad for the administration. They could maybe go to their freshman year law school or their, their, you know, their first year of law school and pull up their... Are the thesis that they had to do on it because there you go. Well, wait a minute, really doesn't wait a minute. Obama's to thesis didn't he spend over two hundred thousand dollars on legal fees preventing us yes. from reading that actual that thesis? Get, Transparently, this, lawyer. this yeah. is it. Let me give you a tip. The idea that the Justice Department, Eric Holder, were so quick to say, "Oh, we'd be delighted to respond." might indicate that they think this court has become so politicized you know what, and so hard really, no. and going after this health care no. bill with no basis, they're delighted to That's say, oh yeah, we can make the case. How okay. can this, I don't know how this is politicized, but Kimberly, answer uh, whatever question that you, ask you might think you've yes. heard. I mean, I'll answer something, exactly. Coming in, um, look, this, I think that the president's comments were totally out of line, and wow, what a big mistake to sit there and fire shots like that at the Supreme Court. It's totally inappropriate. It's as if he's trying to influence 
the decision and, and mocking the very institution. That's one of the foundations that our country is founded on with the separation of powers. They have the authority to rule. And guess what, Mr. Constitutional Lawyer, apparently you don't know so much because you don't even realize that what you've tried to put through and ramrod through with the, you know, the country here is something that is absolutely Did Illegal. Didn't he just confuse? Absolutely want... illegal. Well, how is it illegal? How is it illegal? Four the of the justices clause weren't even on the court in... during uh, Bush v. Gore, matter. by the way. But Look, you I'll said tell you what matters you listed that is as that an you've example. got appeals courts, conservative appeal courts, who have affirmed this individual we'll mandate. Happens, the Commerce. Yo, oh, so right, so given up the what... argument. Oh, I haven't yeah. given it up at all. Oh no, but I'm saying why can't the president just wait and and yeah and wait and see what happens? No, why why when you have a court that's become so highly politicized, shouldn't the president say you are sacrificing your credibility? He's politicizing the court. He's not criticizing. He's politicizing the court. Oh yeah, Bush v. Gore, citizens. I'm turning the car around right now, and we're not going to go to Six Flags. All right, good. Got to take a break. Coming up is the race for the GOP nomination over. Decisive primary wins for Romney last night could have sealed Santorum's fate. Is Romney ready to go up against President Obama? It's a segment so amazing that if it were a chimichanga, you'd say, hey, that's an amazing chimichanga. Yeah. Yeah. Also, don't forget to email us at the five at foxnews.com.